Did you like my video? Did you like the book reviews? Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. We are going to do book reviews. For the month of April, I wanted to do the Astronauts Wives Club. It was actually really timely because as you probably heard in the news, one of the astronauts who assisted with the Neil Armstrong landing on the moon died this week. So this is actually relevant. So let's talk about the Astronauts Wives Club. It is like Mad Men meets science meets the beginning of the 60s and the women's liberation movement it's actually really great it goes to show that it takes more than just great scientists to put a man on the moon it actually takes amazing women too and i really like this book it was great i just wish we'd seen other women, not just the wives. I am sure that the wives interacted with the female scientists and other people and this book made me feel like as if the wives lived in a little bubble and it was a nice anthropological view into a, an enclosed world and that's great, but I wish we'd seen the big picture of what these women were living through. I mentioned before that the woman, the platinum blonde, she was JFK's favorite astronaut wife. And I think JFK has great taste in women because Reen Carpenter went on to have her own column. And it even says that the marriage between me and my husband's not that great. I need to fly on my own wings. So if you want like a timely book uh, for what's going on in space right now with the first flight in, above Mars and uh, the astronaut Michael Collins dying, this is a great read. It kind of feels like a memoir and if you're interested in more, there's actually the author Lily Copel. She actually goes through each picture that's in the book and she does like a little, this was taken when the moon landed. This was taken when the capsule landed and the astronauts were recovered. There were some tragedies in the, in the space race and I won't talk about that because I don't want to give away any spoilers. So that's mentioned in the book and uh, it's just a nice read if you're interested. For the month of May, we're going to read A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. This book is an example of writer's acrobatic strengths. It sounds like from the beginning, Ruth is a, I don't even know if she's biracial, but she has a Japanese ancestry. They live in Vancouver and there's a connection to Japan and is it from the Fukushima nuclear explosion? Is it from the tsunami? I won't tell you, but like there's wild acrobatics here. Let me explain what I mean by that. When you're reading, there's a lot of use of Japanese words and I almost feel like I'm fluent in Japanese. I'm kind of kidding, but not. You can actually see the kanji script and I don't know if my grade seven social studies class is accurate, but the script is based on pictograms, so the symbols actually mean something with respect to pictures. And as you read, yes, I'm slow to start with when I read, but I'm getting slowed down because there's so many footnotes and there's Buddhist chants and Japanese pop culture in the book so i feel like i would be completely fine if you left me in tokyo because i'm actually starting to learn japanese words it is a 400 page novel and so far i'm interested if you've read people of the book the tea girl of hummingbird lane maybe to a lesser extent the joy luck club you kind of get a flavor for this book here. And also parts of it are where I am, are written in letters. So if you like the Guernsey Literary Potato Peel Society, you will like this book. 
I hope I said that right. It's been a while since I read it. It's really good, and we're gonna read this for the month of May. If you don't get through it, don't feel bad. It's it's a, it's an acrobatic stunt that this writer is capable of, and I'm really impressed. So this is what we read for April for May. Next, here's what I'm reading currently. I finished reading this biography called The Education of Will, A Mutual Memoir of a Woman and Her Dog by Patricia B. McConnell. So this book is about a woman who adopts uh, like an Australian shepherd collie kind of dog. And I don't understand why so many people are having difficulties with this particular breed because the dog next door is the most cutest dog. I'll ask her owner's permission if I can post Bailey's picture on my channel. She's the cutest little puppy and she greets me every morning that I'm off work because when I'm off work my lifestyle is very different than when I'm working so when I off work I walk around the pool and I try to teach my dog this is our mor morning routine and she comes out to say hello and my dog is terrified of her so he runs back in the house so it's an exercise in teaching Cal, like don't be afraid of the backyard, don't be afraid of Bailey, this is normal, you, you have to get over your fear of other dogs. And she's the sweetest puppy and she doesn't understand what's going on. And I don't understand why the books I'm about to show you, everyone seems to be having problems with this particular breed. I think it's like the Collies and the Australian Shepherds. Can someone comment below? This book was a surprisingly intense read because it is a memoir. This woman must be in her 70s now and lives in Wisconsin. And some pretty horrific things happen in her life. And it feels to me like her rehabilitating will is rehabilitating herself. So if you're into that vein of book, you'll like this. Because I read that book, I went to the library and looked for other books written by her and this is called For the Love of a Dog. It's a tough read only because it's very scientific in the sense that it's talking about how do we know dogs have emotion? Can we make them have an MRI? And, and I would compare this, the Rocket Men, which is a dry read, I would compare this as a canine equivalent of Rocket Men. So there's a good chance it'll take maybe five or six extensions from the library in order to finish this book. I also started The Secret History of Kindness, Learning How Dogs Learn. I'll be honest, the reason why I picked this book up is because if you can see on the cover, there's a picture of a black lab, and as I'm sure many of you have guessed, I'm still grieving the loss of Spot, and that's why I picked it up. It's, it's along the same vein of the book I mentioned previously, which was For the Love of a Dog, and that is that this book feels like it's the same thing. How do we know how the dogs have love and, and feelings, and it does like a like comparative animal studies and that's how far I'm in it now. And finally, the book that is complete departure is called The Anti-Diet. Reclaim your time, money, well-being and happiness through intuitive eating. Now most of you know that I do intermittent fasting. So it's about six o'clock, 6.30 in the evening. And because I'm filming on a Friday, I'm not going to open my fast till Saturday morning about maybe 11. We'll see. We'll see if I get to sleep in. Sleeping in is a great hack <laughs> if you're trying to do intermittent fasting because you're asleep. You can't eat when you're sleeping. I'm curious if this book will fuel me more into intermittent fasting because I won't lie. When my feeding window opens, I'm really indiscriminate and I eat all kinds of nonsense and I eat healthy in the sense that if you compare me to a teenager yes I eat healthy but if you compare me to like someone like the whole 30 lady or a, like a paleo diet or a keto diet or Atkins South Beach no I'm sure I'm not consuming enough vegetables and fruit and um, yeah, so I'm curious if this book will do the trick and sort of inspire me to uh, 
eat better. We'll see. If you're interested in intermittent fasting, I'll link the video for my introduction to it. It's, it's a book called The Diabetic Code by Jonathan Fung, and it helped me a lot two years ago in this journey. So I hope you enjoy the books that I'm reading and uh, the book that I read, and I will see you in May when we do a tale for the time being. Thanks everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.